Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is based on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and here we are going to dis discuss in detail the mechanism advantages and limitations of the keller plan or personalized system of instruction or the psi this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor jasim ahmed from jamia millia islamia new delhi this video is produced under the project dts swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello my dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we will be discussing a topic which is related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this lecture is going to base on the mechanism advantages and limitations of the keller plan or the personalized system of instruction popularly also called as psi the objectives of this session are to discuss the mechanism and steps of personalized system of instruction or psi or also the keller plan then to elaborate the advantages and limitations of personalized system of instruction or the keller plan dear students in the previous sessions we have known a lot about the psi or the personalized system of instruction or the keller plan we have seen that it's a system of instruction which is capable of providing individualized uh, instruction on the personal basis to the individual learners for acquiring mastery over the subject matter according to their own pace by an individual teacher with the help of few capable or uh, senior students who are considered to be as the proctors in this lecture we will be discussing about the mechanism or the different steps of uh, the personalized system of instruction uh, the, these steps are used if we want to implement the personalized system of instruction in the classroom process so here we will be going in detail and we will be seeing that what are those steps the mechanism and also what are the advantages and the limitations specifically in our country which can be faced if we want to implement the system in our country so let us start this session and see that what are those minute details related to implementation and the practical aspect of implementation of the personalized system of instruction or the keller plan in our country so first let us see what exactly are the different steps which are the part of the mechanism when we want to apply the keller plan we want to go ahead with uh, initiating the personalized system of instruction what exactly should be the mechanism or the uh, steps of the operation which we have to use while giving the instructions in our classroom situations in the setup which is working on the uh, psi or the personalized system of instruction or the keller plan so the first step or the first uh, mechanism part or operation which we have to take care here is the division or dividing the course content into proper units these units are kept as relatively large in comparison like these units are larger than the units which are uh, actually prepared in the programmed instructional units which are also called as frames when we talk about programmed instructions the unit there are called as frames but here in this case in case of uh, the uh, the psi or in the keller plan basically the units are larger than the units which we have seen in the programmed instructions next step or the next way is the 
the way in which we are providing and we are arranging for the proper learning material this uh, material or the content which we are actually uh, providing can be in the form of a study guide or the learning aids uh, then uh, rest of the text materials which can be found uh, wherever uh, we can go uh, like to the libraries and to different uh, places where we can get the textual material and also we have to create as a teacher we have to create the learning environment for the learners so the objectives must be made quite specified and clear to the learners they must have proper knowledge and access to the sources of learning and what is to be done by the learners should be properly explained to them through various kind of instructions and the instructions which we can give to the students can be in any form in, in verbal forms or in written forms like we give a lot of uh, verbal instructions written instructions and even we create guidelines or uh, the 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 material which is given in the beginning of the course uh, like the study material and in beginning uh, we give some sort of guidelines or a guidebook kind of thing which gives all the instructions that what to do and what not to do to be done in due course of the course so that is something which is very much clearly indicated to the students by the uh, by the teacher or by the person who is imparting the knowledge here in the psi the next step is that when we are taking care of the individual learners they are to be asked to proceed on the path of learning by studying the assigned unit so we as a teacher have to ask these individual learners because they will be following their own pace they are going to follow their own learning path so the instructor has to assign some sort of work to them so here the teacher or the program will be asking these individual learners to study the assigned unit the study guide provides like uh, certain instructions and this study guide is very helpful to uh, to the learner in this stage because the learner is some somebody who is new to the program so every now and then the learner will be going to see that what he or she has to do to that study guide or the booklet which is provided or some some sort of material which is uh, having all those instructions written so it basically introduces the learner with the course content or um, uh, whatever units are the part of the content so all the uh, content the units and the rest of the material all sort of clarifications and the instructions the objectives all the questions and queries whatever this learner is having everything is actually solved if the learner goes through the study guide or the uh, the guidelines which are provided to the learner by the instructor this material actually has to suggest the ways and means of obtaining the answers which this learner has to give in due course of the entire program the students are free to work on whatever assignments are given whatever units uh, they have to complete so the students very much on their own pace can go ahead and take up the assigned units at their home or maybe at the school or even in some sort of workshop where they they might be working so they can even learn on the go they can even learn uh, in a library or even in the laboratory wherever they find space they can uh, continue their learning process they have to study they have to gain the required learning experiences and they have to write the answers to the assignment questions the assignments which are given by the instructor they have to answer those questions the assignments they have to complete and then they uh, they have to complete all the tasks which are given in the unit which they have to complete and they may seek the guidance from the teacher and here because there is a provision of proctors uh, in the form of senior students so even 
the guidance can be sought after from the teacher or the proctor when and uh, as and when it is required so whenever there is a requirement of uh, any sort of guidance the student can approach to the proctor or to the teacher every now and then it is actually uh, it can be received but the point is that why unnecessarily the student is going to get the guidance only when it is required then only the student goes and asks the uh, the queries to the uh, teacher or the proctor and the next step is that all the students are required to proceed on the path of learning with their own pace which is something which is the essence of the keller plan so the subject matter which is presented through this uh, uh, the course units all uh, the the units are to be mastered to the extent of a, uh, a certain goal or set uh, uh, set guidelines so there should be some predetermined and set level by every student in his or her own way so as and when the student thinks that he or she has reached the mastery level this student may request the proctor or the teacher for taking his or her test now the point is that suppose there is a course where uh, it is already written clearly written that once you are um, like through with this unit or the material you can go for a test and in this test if you achieve 80% marks then only you can move to the next uh, unit so in this case if the student takes a test and suppose the marks are 70% then the student has to go for another round of test and for this another round there will be some referrals that you have to go and study because this was a question which you have did um, not correctly so you have to refer to this material go ahead and read it again and come back and give the test and suppose at this time once the student has given the test for the unit and he or she gains more than 80% marks suppose he gains 90% marks so now this person will be allowed to proceed on the next successive course unit otherwise he has to study again suppose again he has not achieved the requisite marks then he has to again study and he has to uh, attain mastery in that particular unit which he or she is reading once the unit test certifies that okay this was the the minimum marks which the person has to attain and now this person has attained this percent of mark marks then this after this certification after this uh, gaining of 80 percent marks the student will be automatically uh, promoted or, or forwarded to the next unit so this is somehow a very uh, unique feature of the this uh, uh, keller plan uh, which provides a lot of liberty to the reader to the learner because here the learner is allowed to study for many a times and uh, attain mastery in a particular content so this was the uh, the next step the next uh, part of the mechanism is that the student who obtain mastery over the course units they are picked up by the teacher and uh, they are trained for playing the role of proctors this this system of proctors is a very peculiar thing in the keller plan so here the duty of these proctors uh, basically uh, is to assist and help the student learners to attain the mastery level the personal face to face guidance and assistance to the individual learner becomes easy with the help of these proctors because now the teacher is having many helping hands in the form of these uh, uh, students or the uh, proctors so guiding taking the test then uh, making the assessment like immediate scoring then prompt feedback and reinforcement providing uh, some certain sort of feedback where um, you have to motivate the student all these things are possible only if you have got many your hands and here it is possible because we have got the proctors so this art and skill of these trained proctors help a lot to the teacher for running the course in a soft uh, and uh, a very uh, flowy manner in this way due care and attention should always be given in the proper training of the proctors for getting the 
desired success in providing personalized instruction to all learners. It should not be like that we have halfway trained the proctors and then they are actually uh, working and uh, improper guidance is provided. So this training of proctors and then only uh, letting them train the other uh, students and the other learners should be done. Then the next point is that when a student attains mastery over all the assigned units of a course material and uh, in this way we can say that this person, this student passes all the unit tests. In the end, this individual is asked to appear in the final test which comprises of the total course material, like the questions are, are going to be given in this final test from the entire set of units from the total course material and this final test or the summative assessment will be used like this is going to be assessed and this is going to be used for awarding the grade. So the task of awarding grade to this learner is quite unrelated to the relative performance of the other fellow students. So it's the aim uh, like the aim is basically that how we are going to reinforce and motivate the behavior of this individual learner for further learning and because there is no any com comparison. There is no any comparison of performance with the other students. So this individual learner is being focused by the teacher or the proctor and uh, how we are going to, uh, we will be uh, enhancing the performance and capabilities of this individual student is basically taken care of here in the Keller plan. So in such an evaluation, no student gets uh, kind of um, like competitive spirit is basically not there and basically there is no any frustration on the account of uh, the relative performance or there is no any kind of uh, uh, stress related to the uh, performance and this, this uh, person receives uh, due motivation for attaining the specific set of mastery level of his or her own learning. So somehow it is a very uh, novel kind of uh, way in which we can learn because we don't have to care about any of the peer group members, any of those um, uh, pressures. We are free to, to study. We are free to study on our own pace. We are free to study to ask uh, um, uh, and we are even uh, free to ask many questions and whatever are the issues related to that particular part which we are studying, we can again and again ask questions related to it. We can give the exams and tests on our own pace. There, there are many attempts which are given. Suppose there is an MCQ, then there are many attempts which are given to complete that uh, particular test and gain that percentage of marks and if there are uh, written assignments then also there are there are many um, uh, like the the uh, time which is given to complete the assignment is something very reasonable so it's a very easy and kind of liberated way to study through the courses which are designed in the uh, leagues of uh, the Keller plan so after checking out these steps and the mechanism, let us see what are the advantages of the Keller plan or the PSI. There are various research studies and experiments uh, which are happening nowadays and even they have uh, uh, been done in the, uh, in the later years to measure the effectiveness and the usefulness of the PSI as a method of instruction in the classroom situation and in this particular uh, kind of uh, researches uh, when we see all the results which are given by these researches we can find certain uh, practical experiences which show us that what are the advantages and the merits which can be seen in the in this kind of method where we are providing the instruction in a very personalized way. So let us see that what can be 
considered as the advantages and the merits of the PSI or the Keller plan. Number one can be uh, considered as a merit, uh, like the point that PSI can help the learners to work independently and proceed on the path of learning with their own pace. This is something which is actually very important. It is not asking any other student or this particular individual who is taking up the course is at the center and this person has to not care or about anybody else. He or she should be working on her own pace. So this is the first advantage. The second advantage is that it's a good instructional process which allows us to achieve mastery learning and accepted level of performance is gained through this um, method. If there is a course which is planned according to this me method or this uh, particular uh, instructional process, you will find that the student is going to achieve mastery learning and, and this mastery learning will, will be uh, to the accepted level of performance. The next advantage can be that as a method of instruction, Keller plan provides more effective this this Keller plan proves to be more effective than the traditional methods which can be uh, taken up as any of the classrooms where the lecture method or demonstration method, even the laboratory method. So this Keller plan or the method of personalized system of instruction, it proves to be more effective than all these traditional methods. It is useful in the teaching of all the subjects, but proves specifically effective for the courses that need convergent thinking. Convergent thinking, which is obviously opposite to divergent thinking on the part of the learners, where we have to focus on something. We have to come towards the center. We have to make a, a goal which is very much focused. So convergent thinking is very much effectively dealt here in the Keller plan. So it is more suitable to the teaching. When we are talking about convergent thinking, you can assume that this can be, this system can be more useful in the higher classes and the college courses in comparison to the lower ones. Because in case of lower uh, classes or in the school uh, level when when we are uh, teaching to the students of uh, uh, lower standards we have to be very divergent we have to be very much like we have to allow the students to think very very divergently but here the students have to be convergent and they have to focus on a specific point so this is more advantageous in the higher classes or at the college level then the next advantage can be it helps the students exhibit better performance in terms of retention and use of the acquired learning. Here the learner is able to acquire real knowledge with a deep understanding and better insight. There is no rote memorization of the facts as the learner basically tries to acquire meaningful learning through his or her own independent efforts. Let, let me quote one example. An experience of my own. I was pursuing one course from a very renowned university of America and that course was uh, developed on the lines of Keller plan and uh, during the month when I uh, when I uh, took the course uh, first week was fine I did all the assignments everything and then I got very busy with some of my schedules and I was uh, not in a position to give time to the course and it was like for one month I was not able to see even that what is happening and what is uh, be, to be done in the course. After one month when I was a little relaxed then I went again to the platform and saw that whether it is uh, still open for me or not. I saw that the course was open and there was a message from the teacher that 
you can set your uh, your uh, timeline again and according to your own convenience you can complete the course so there was a button which i i was needed to be uh, to click and uh, once i clicked that my timelines for completing the course it was of around 2 months it was automatically adjusted and i was allowed to pursue the course from the point where i left and then i just picked up and uh, completed that particular week and gave the test once the assessment was done then i was allowed to go for the uh, second uh, week basically the that course was having weeks so first week once we complete the first week then we are allowed to go to the second week so this is this is a analogy which shows that if the as a student i am not having time at a particular uh, point even i can come back and uh, resume the course so there is no any point of dropping out from a course so this is something which is uh, exceptional in these courses and that is why the retention rate and completion rate to these courses is very high and it happens at higher education level yes it is very true so if we talk about the other advantages the learner can acquire good study habit as the learner has to work continuously on the successive course units on his or her own this learner has to achieve mastery over the subject after the test the performance uh, or is actually seen or uh, you can actually get a self assessment of yourself after you give the unit test and you get the marks so this makes the learner very much responsible and disciplined and also sincere in the task of learning so if you are leaving a portion or a video or a clip or a text part and there is a question which is coming from that part then you will you will get to know that you cannot leave that particular part and you will be compelled to study you will be compelled to actually go ahead and read it again and then only you can give the unit test so this uh, if you are a, a rigorous reader then it will become a kind of habit of yours if you do such type of courses reading or studying will become a kind of habit because you cannot uh, overlook any of the material because the unit test is going to assess each and everything which you have been provided by the teacher in the form of the study material then the learner can develop proper positive attitude towards learning and education with the help of the keller plan this learner gets proper feedback and reinforcement as and when needed by uh, the learner in the process of learning this learner never gets frustrated because uh, this uh, person is not compared with other students regarding his or her performance the aim is to achieve mastery irrespective of the time schedule and so there is no any kind of uh, disappointment or um, any sort of failure but always the learner gets proper guidance and personal assistance from the teacher and the proctors this is a very good thing which uh, which is responsible for the popularity of the courses which are designed on the lines of the the personalized system of instruction then the psi helps in introducing a very positive personal social element in the process of teaching learning the learners are provided instruction and guidance on a very personal face to face and one to one basis because you can even find the videos uh, those small clips of 1 minute or 2 to 3 minutes the the teacher is is basically pointing all the issues to you and it seems that she or he is basically talking to you and taking the points on one to one basis and therefore there is 
probability probability of more social and personal interaction between the teacher and the taught or the student in this system of instruction because of the conversations happening the videos even there are uh, chat boxes where you can write and you can find that next day there is another chat which is from the instructor commenting or giving some sort of uh, suggestions to you on what you have asked in the form of a chat uh, comment so this is something which gives you a lot of motivation that you are being seen or you are being addressed by the teacher or even the proctor the next uh, can be the advantage which we can discuss here can be that the students who achieve the target of getting mastery over all the units of courses uh, or the the material they get opportunity to be uh, selected as the proctors so the supervisor and the guide of the learning of their fellow students basically uh, is given to a person who is itself the part of the course so this gives a lot of motivation to the other students and this makes the students to work sincerely and speedily for getting the honor of becoming the nominated proctor or cho being chosen by the teacher as the proctor the use of proctors in the method uh, uh, this this particular method of instruction makes the instructional process very effective and efficient and also it gives a lot of working hands to the teacher so the establishment of the personal bond between the learner and the instructor becomes uh, very very much possible through this unique pattern of proctorship and consequently we can see that uh, the, this scalar plan or the personalized system of instruction this proves a, a kind of method which is very effective and even the strategies which we can plan here in this psi in comparison to other uh, strategies are much successful in uh, in most of the cases at the higher education level so the advantages are many uh, the point is that how judiciously we are creating a course and doing a course so that will be uh, the best advantage which we can discuss about the system let us now see what are the issues uh, which can be seen as the difficulty or the problems in terms of the adoption of psi and we will be talking about the difficulties in our country like what kind of difficulties we can face uh, in terms of the adoption of psi in india because we are living in a very big very much populated country and we have seen that there are many advantages in terms of using the psi but still we we can find it very rare in our country so what are those issues let us see let us try to brainstorm on those issues so this personalized system of instruction has been tried successfully in the classrooms of the developed countries where it is possible to meet the challenges and requirements essential for its use countries like the us or the uk and even other countries canada australia they are using the personalized system of instruction very well in their classrooms but in case of our country there are many hurdles and limitations which can be seen when we try to adopt uh, the this particular system in our classrooms so what are those limitations some of them let us discuss let, let us try to uh, to chalk out uh, and if we can chalk out the problems maybe in future we would be in a position to solve the issues and find some solutions for the problems so the first point can be that our teachers are not very much equipped with the know how of this new system although it's not very new but still we have uh, we have not very much trained or equipped teachers in terms of using the system most of the teachers have not even 
heard the name of uh, such instructional system and it is not included in the teacher preparation courses of various universities and that the, this is the prime of his reason like very much in uh, you can say that uh, actual reason that why the teachers suffer from the lack of the knowledge related to the PSI. In, in various uh, programs, uh, nowadays, you can find the inclusion of uh, the massive open online courses and other type of online courses and the courses which are uh, using this personalized system of instruction, uh, which is being the, how the, these uh, systems work, all these things are now becoming the part of the uh, the B. Ed. program or the the other teacher education courses, but in the later years it was not there in the in the teacher preparation programs. So this is the sole reason why the older teachers would not be having any idea. But the point is that we have to train them, we have to provide them the proper information. So this is the first difficulty. Then the teachers. The new entrants who have studied about it in their teacher preparation courses face a shift. Like they, they can see that once they are talking about these courses, they are being opposed by the elder teachers or the older teachers. Because the older teachers are not able to, uh, to make out how to work on it. So they actually start opposing. They don't wish to uh, to actually uh, bring any new system into the into the process. And in this case, what they start doing, they start sidetracking the new thing on the account of uh, their ignorance about such innovative instruction. So this clash of the generations can also be seen in our country. The fear and the temperament of rigidity is basically a kind of obstacle, a great obstacle in adopting this new instructional system. Then the workability, the feasibility, and the effect of this system as a method of instruction have not been properly tested and evaluated in our institutions of learning. This is also one of the reasons because we don't have a very good researches or uh, the researches who are done on large scales to see the effectiveness, to see that how the systems can work, what can be the ways in which we can utilize the services of these uh, personalized system of instruction in our country. So the researches are very less. And unless it is not initiated and tested in a proper way, there would likely be reasonable fears and resistance from the traditionalists and all those who are, uh, who are basically uh, from the old, uh, older lot or older generations. So the progressive teachers and the traditionalist teachers are going to, to face a lot of clash and there will be resistance which can be seen here in this case, in the case of implementation. Then the personalized system of instruction may run into bad weather on account of its unique demand of meeting the services of so many proctors. Because we have to take care of every every uh, individual uh, in a very rigorous manner. So there are a lot of proctors which are required. Such responsible students who may play the role of a well-balanced supervisor, guide, instructor, that type of genuinity in the student is hardly available in the present teaching learning environment. And specifically in our schools and colleges, we can find less uh, students who are who are ready to take any additional responsibility. 
so nobody is going to sacrifice his own time and energy for the sake of the welfare of their fellow learners and in such a situation there is hardly any room for the successful implementation of this proctor based instructional strategy then we can also see some sort of handicap of psi which lies in its big expectation from the individual learners we give a lot of liberty yes this is the soul uh, and the the spirit of psi the individual learner is provided with full freedom of completing the unit at uh, his or her own pace and there lies a danger and possibility that this learner may misutilize this freedom in wasting his or her time in other misadvent uh, like misfortunes and misadventures than the real learning so in the absence of any sort of competition and comparison with other students of the class this learner may not take care of his or her progress and in this way he or she can take too much time for the mastery of a of a completing a unit so this can be uh, seen in the form of uh, delaying the unit and wasting a lot of time so this is also somehow uh, difficulty which we are uh, we can actually see uh, in our country which becomes a kind of hurdle in terms of adopting the personalized system of instruction in our country let us try to see some of the general difficulties some more points which which can address those difficulties so psi may face a lot of practical difficulties in being adopted uh by our classrooms as a method of instruction and simply because our classroom environment and resources can hardly meet the needed requirements for its implementation we can find it a little difficult to uh, to implement in our schools and colleges so what are the other difficulties and problems which we can actually face while uh, implementing this system into our classrooms a very important point is that our classrooms are very crowded we, we are a populous country our classrooms are crowded and it is very difficult to provide personal assistance and attention on such personal basis as demanded in this method we have seen that this method accounts for the personalized type of attention given to each and every individual so it is difficult it is in a very crowded uh, atmosphere if we have got uh, hundreds of students it will be very difficult to attend the student in a very personalized manner when the course material resources the guides the test material all these things are not available for use at most of the times we will find that the appropriate material is not available the teachers are overburdened it is difficult for them to carry out the varying demands and responsibilities which is needed here in this method in in our country we can find that the teachers are given a lot of other responsibilities than teaching they are also doing a lot of other things they teach as well they do uh, they they also uh, perform other responsibilities so they are already overburdened so we cannot expect them the level of uh, precision which is required here in this method the use of multimedia is uh, the backbone of the system we can uh, allow any personalized learning system not only uh, using the audio files the video fi files the films the graphics and the material a, a lot of online libraries and laboratories all these things are very much used by the help of multimedia but it is not feasible it's not very much possible on account of the lack of the finances and in such a situation implementation of psi will not bring the desired result 
because if we want to use the multimedia we have to we have to have certain devices for the recording for editing for the different purposes for creation of the content and this lack of uh, infrastructure the lack of the um, the money which is required in uh, in terms of creation of these material and then implementation that actually makes it again a difficult way uh, to, to attain the success. Then the implementation of this method requires, if we want to implement in a class, a, a kind of spacious room, or suppose a student is studying at home, then no problem. But in case we are providing this assistance in the form of PSI, in the classrooms, the classrooms should be spacious. There should be resources and other related facilities that are handy, like that, that are basically uh, very easily available. But this type of uh, provisions are hardly possible on a very large scale, with, which is required in our country, in our institutions, because of the population, because of the lack of uh, the resources and also the high level of uh, requirements to cater to a big population. So these things become a hurdle or difficulty in the way of implementation of the personalized system of instruction or the Keller plan. So in this way, we may observe that there there are many handicaps, obstacles, and difficulties in the adoption of PSI as a method of instruction. However, many of them can be eliminated and overlooked in case we resolve to experiment with this novel idea and method of instruction, which proves to be very effective. It is proved very effective in the Western countries. There is no denying of the fact that the instructions received and carried out on a personal basis in a desirable personal social environment bring the best teaching learning outcomes and implement a new strategy which aims for the better individualization of the teaching learning act. But the hurdles which we have discussed, if we are in a position to remove any of those hurdles if they come into the way by our determination, enthusiasm, preparation, zeal, and planning on the part of we as a teacher and even our authorities, our educational administration and the authorities, then it can prove to be the excellent method of providing instruction in a very individualized, very personalized way to our students. The learning can be excellent if we are providing instructions in the form of ESI or the Keller plan. And we hope that there will be a day when it becomes very popular in our country also, and we will be in a position to impart knowledge in this method. So let us try to summarize what we have studied today. For making use of PSI, we can proceed by some of the steps. Let us recapitulate the steps. The first step can be division of the course content into proper units, then writing of the instructional objectives of the unit in hand into behavioral terms, then planning and arranging for the needed instructional material and facilities needed for individualized instruction, setting the mastery level that is to be achieved by the individual learner, making the individual learner to proceed on the path of learning by studying the assigned unit with their own pace, testing of the attainment of the mastery level with the help of a unit test, providing the status of proctors to the students who attain mastery over all the units of the course material and then assigning them duties to help others for attaining mastery, asking the students on the individual level to appear in the final test, 
comprising the total course material for being awarded the grades. And when the entire units are completed, then only we can go for this final uh, test or exam, which is used for awarding the grades. And this is also a way in which we can reinforce the behavior of the learner in future. PSI is credited with a number of merits and advantages. Let us see what are these advantages. We have discussed in detail, but let us just uh, try to recapitulate in a fast way. It is helpful to the learners to proceed independently on the path of learning with their own pace. In making all the students attain the desired mastery level, in carrying out the task of teaching learning at the understanding and reflective level instead of the memory level. So it takes you to the upper and to the higher level. It's also helpful in developing positive attitude towards learning and desirable study habits. PSI is helpful in developing desirable social and personal interaction between the teacher and the taught. And it is also helpful in the provision of uh, uh, providing motivation to the deserved ones by assigning them the status of the proctors and then making them uh, be part of the course and uh, allow them to help the classmates in their individualized instruction. After the merits and advantages, we have also seen that PSI suffers from a number of hurdles and limitations in terms of its employment as a method of instruction in our schools, in our country. What exactly are those points which we can actually mention here? The first point can be the ignorance and apathy of the teachers towards the use of PSI. Then usual fear and temperament of rigidity in switching over to a new thing or innovation. Lack of the necessary studies and researches showing positive results of the adoption of PSI. Then a number of practical difficulties coming in the way of its adoption like overcrowding in our classrooms, a heavy workload of the teachers, lack of essential instruction material and facilities required for the proper adoption of PSI, the non-availability of competent and sincere proctors for playing the desired roles in the uh, course in the individual individualized instruction and possibility on the part of uh, uh, the individual learner to misuse the freedom given to this learner for the individualized instruction. So these are few of those hurdles or the limitations which we can talk about uh, when we are trying to implement the system, which is very useful. But if we try to implement it in our country, these hurdles come in our way. So we just hope that there will be a day, there will be some, some time when we will be in a position to implement this excellent system, which is, which is utilized in many Western countries for uh, making their educational process very effective. So there will be some day when we will be in a position to utilize the services of PSI in even our country. These are few of those references and the suggested links which were used while developing this lecture. You can also read more to these uh, references and links. This is all for today. Let us see each other in another session another time. Thank you for uh, listening to me. I'll hope that uh, the Keller plan and the personalized system of instruction and all the knowledge related to it is going to help you a lot in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Dear learners, you were watching a video related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology. This video was based on the mechanism advantages and limitations of the Keller plan or personalized system of instruction or the PSI. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home 
during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.